loud. Hello, everyone. Here and not here, future, past, present. Welcome. It is our May Cards and Channeling Meetup. I am your host, Sonia Stell, running on Pisces time as per usual. Um, and about to read the next month for filth with any luck. And by for filth, I mean with joy and loving appreciation because we do not need to invite any hostility into our lives through the energies at bay. We're already going through a lot right now <laughs> as a species. So I just feel like whatever we can do to sort of calm the energy is what we need to do. Now, let me see what decks are coming forward. Ooh, deck of character coming through. Any other decks? Okay. So this is for the key card. And this is for the concern the opportunity. Okay. So for our key card, we're going to be using the deck of character. And for our concern, opportunity, and obstacle cards, we're going to be using the numinous tarot, which if you remember is a gender non-conforming tarot deck. I literally just took them out of my bag and they were the ones that I wanted to do. So that's what we're going to do. It is May 31st in the year of our savior, Harriet Tubman, 2022. Okay. All right. So let's see. Okay, Those cards, that was literally three that flipped out. So let's see if I have them in the right order. Okay, that's resolved. And now our key card. Let me see if I need to do that now. Okay, our key card that ties it all together or tells us how it's connected. I have a feeling. Is it you? No. Okay, now. None of the cards that fell on the ground, but the fairy says hello, okay? All right, y'all. Let us begin with our concern for the upcoming month of June 2020. And our concern card is the creator of two. Uh, the creator in the Numinous Tarot are the queens and tombs are the pentacles. And I don't know if I've pulled the queen in a little while, but, or if I've said this in this particular thing, I think I've said it in the, um, our vibe right happy hour. But basically I always like to tell people if we're building a house, the queen of pentacles, sorry, the queen of swords is the architect. The queen of pentacles or tombs is the construction worker or workers. The queen of wands is the contractor and the queen of cups is the interior designer. And if we're throwing a party, the queen of swords uh, decides the, those who are gonna be invited and sends out the invitations. The queen of wands is the bouncer at the door and is security. The queen of pentacles is in the kitchen catering, making sure everyone's fed. fed. And the queen of cups is the hostess with the mostess. So when we're talking about the queen of pentacles, we're talking about collective care. We're talking about collective attention, right? Because whether this card is aligned or not, like sometimes uh, the opposite of care can be a lack of awareness or a lack of attention. So um, either a hyper awareness of groups or a lack of a hyper awareness of collective groups or like other things such as reading the room. And um, also that the... So I like to tell people who get the Queen of Swords, it's like the Queen of Swords energy arrives early or plans things early, but leaves early. The Queen of Cups is the last person to leave the party. The Queen of Wands is also one of the last people to leave the party. The Queen of Swords and the Queen of Pentacles, to me, are energies that plan and leave at their leisure. But particularly with the Creator of Tombs, the Queen of Pentacles, this is someone who is there through most of the process. And then when the process is complete is free of, of obligation, right? So for this to be the concern, I think we're talking about um, 
community. We're talking about our personal communities in June. We're talking about um, shoring up those communities and obviously investing in those communities. We're gonna go into a summer with a lot of activity um, that doesn't just include in the States gun activity and, and party activities, but also like fire season and flood season and many other things where more than ever, we should be checking on our who we consider to be our communities, but then also the communities that of more obligation, right? Our familial community, our worker working community, of course, the community of our relationships, um, platonic and otherwise. And um, in addition to that, there is just this general concern with um, not so I think of the kings as more systems structural based and the queens as more communally um, collectively structurally based but I don't want to eliminate the real uh, tendency of a pentacles queen of being a planner um, and of being an intender and of being someone who uh, seeks to create cohesion and organization by explicitly stating that those are their interests. So with the Queen of Pentacles here for June, it's like, you know, make it known to those people who you care for, to those communities who you care for, what you want from them, what you would like them to hold you accountable for, the kind of community that you want to create with them, the kind of time you would like to spend with them, because no days are promised. And um, while we're here incarnate, we have to be very intentional about our incarnate experience and those who are here with us while they're here with us, um, as there's no particular uh, guarantee that we any of us get more than the time that is in front of our or between our temples I should say I was going to say in front of our eyes but let's say between our temples so if the creator of tombs again the queen of pentis is our concern card with butterflies in there so we know we're going through a bit of a transition a bit of a metamorphosis and also like a taking flight right like all this time we spent incubating and sort of spending inside and cohering and recohering and getting our lives together and sort of organizing how we're going to go forward in whatever ways that we can manage to do that considering where we live and our obligations and the circumstances um, that we're in a position now where we are re-emerging and deciding in real time like what society is actually for going forward it's not the rat race that we left in 2019 it's a different kind of rat race arguably more desperate um, less forgiving and um, more demanding. But at the same time, if the energy is ramping up, that's why we ramp up with community. That's why we put an emphasis on the time that we spend with those that we actually know support us and that who we actually want to support. And we do less, um, I don't know why this came to me. I was thinking brown nosing and like, and like capitulating to the things that we don't want. Pentacles is very much about our structure, about our day-to-day -day communal lives. And it's important that we don't convince ourselves that we have to compromise what we ultimately want for those lives, simply because the world is having some dumpster fire moments. And as I always say, love in the time of cholera, love in the time of COVID, love in the time of the Holocaust, love in the time of enslavement, love in the, in the time of the Dust Bowl, but always love. So there's no I'll save this good affection, this good appreciation for later. It's use it now, cash it in, and it will create dividends and it will multiply. We don't have to be conservative about love, actually. <laughs> and I think, in, in fact, being conservative about love is how humanity has arrived in this bunk ass motherfucking little juncture of bullshit after bullshit and also just thinking about all these shooters like genuinely people who are psychotically disconnected from their communities from their sense of love from their sense of purpose these are people who are like the i was i used to say this a lot more and i haven't said it recently but like humanity is only as good as its worst person 
So think about humanity and think about the very worst person, not the one you know about, but the one you don't know about. And humanity is only as good as that motherfucker. So like the reason that we are here to improve the circumstances, to lead by example, to create community and to, to create leadership and intergenerational relationships is so that people aren't out here doing the worst with the most um, at the end of the day, because the creator of tombs, the queen of tombs really just wants to like have a nice hearth going and people together eating and talking and shooting the shit and helping her clean up at the end <laughs> because she didn't cook all that food to clean that shit up herself. Um, so that's what we got going into June, coming into the cookout month, okay? <laughs> so please be aware as summer arrives that if you cooked, somebody else better clean, okay? <laughs> so the opportunity obstacle, how are we treating the queen of pentacles, okay? I haven't pulled this card. Wow, the king, the king came through and the queen, the royal family, look at that motherfucker. The mystic of tombs. Okay, so now we are talking. Now I get why I was like systems planning. The queen and the king want to work together in the pentacles department. This means strong foundations for legacy, for lineage, and also for protection and for culture reasons, right? Like you can't just trust schools anymore to, to uh, not that black people ever could, but like you can't, or poor people, but I'm not, but you can't, or women people, I could keep going. Um, but like, you can't just entrust human humanity anymore to society. That's not gonna work. That hasn't worked. So like, you have to be responsible for the, the micro societies that you are fostering and that you are participating in and that you're overseeing because this, this I'll send my kid to school and they'll learn all the history and they'll come back like a decent human being. No, 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 this isn't, this isn't how that works. There's always a second education that takes place to the first education. And that's, I mean, that's not just because we live in a cis white heteropatriarchal world. That's the way that it always should work. Like the culture in the home and the culture in the community are different cultures. And so with the mystic and the creator of tombs coming through in June, it's very much like shore up make sure your community knows their community. Make sure those people who you want around are aware of that and that they're not investing their lives in the societal community that actually has no safeguards for them by itself. We all have to participate in the big show, but like every department that's making that show possible behind the scenes, you need to make sure your department is solid because when they start making these cuts, <laughs> these cuts from character, these cuts from humanity, you're not going to want to be in that seven of swords situation. And, you know, I, I don't hate the seven of swords. I think of it not as betrayal. I think of it as when you recognize that what you thought you knew isn't what it is. And the betrayal is like, damn, I don't even know. I didn't even know what I thought I knew. And so there's this feeling of self-betrayal, which is like, how could I get caught out there? Or how did I let myself slip again? Or how did they let them fool me? And it's because that version of you just didn't know. Like what we know, we don't question, right? We're not sitting here being like, breathe in, breathe out, walk left, right, raise your arm. No, you just, you know, you can do that if you can do those things. And so you just do them. Whatever you don't know that you know, you think about, you question, you ponder over excessively. And that's an indication that should be an indication to you in your body and in your life that you don't know that thing or that you don't trust that you know that thing or that you don't believe that you know that thing, which is not a bad thing. It's we're always learning, right? There's nothing to change. There's nothing to do. If there's nothing to do, there's something to be. If there's something to be, we don't exist, but, and we exist. So there's something to change, but that doesn't have to be like feeling like bulldozed or, or like rolled over. Change should not whatever. I don't know about should. I'm, 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 I've been con conversing with the word should and whether I should use it. Um, but we, we do not have to experience change as an assault. And this country experiences change as an assault because quite, quite honestly, it was founded on change as an assault. <laughs> so that's, it's epigenetics. Um, and what, you know what's actually also interesting about the two regions of the pentacles coming out? I've been hearing from a lot of friends who have kids, young kids, and um, a lot of friends who are teachers. And literally my friend in Marco Polo today was like, I really want to be a teacher, but like, I don't want to die as a teacher, 
Like if I get, if I'm out in the streets grocery shopping and some shit goes down, that's one thing, but like, I don't want to go to work preparing myself for death and I love teaching, but is it bad that I don't want to teach in a country where I can be shot in my, in my workplace? And I was like, no, it's not bad. And these are all the changes that are going to be taking place, right? Less people being like, you know, I'm not going to be laying my neck on the, on the gallows. <laughs> so y'all better homeschool or figure out some other shit or talk to the NRA motherfucker. Cause it's not going to be me. And so I know so many more families now that are like, do we want to live in the States? Do we want to stay? Is this where we want to raise kids? Is this where we want to have families? Is this where we want to have generational legacies? Is this where we want to bury people? And because of course, where you bury your dead is where you're supposed to at least be able to visit. And um, people are just feeling less and less at home in the hostility of the circumstances. Now, of course, white societal patriarchy is worldwide. And from my years living in Europe, I can tell you that back I was there in 2008, I was there till 2009, and I was there 2013 and 2015, and even then, people would be like, race is like that American thing y'all talk about, and I was like, <laughs> those motherfuckers came from here, so I don't really, do you think, do you think you shipped off all the racists? Do you think all the racists went on the Mayflower? Motherfucker? No. So it's a different kind of prejudice, but what's different about living in a place like Europe or even certain, certain places in the Caribbean, certain places in Africa, certain places in Europe and Asia is that there's an idea of like quality of life. They have a baseline for that where they're like, oh, everyone should have a meal. Everyone should have a roof over their head. So even if they're like, fuck you, I don't like your race, but you can eat. You know, like this, there's, there's, they draw the line at a certain amount of humanity that in our late stage capitalist culture, we just don't have because we're so, we come from such a place of desperation and survival and greed that people can't even see past their noses out here polluting everything and everything and everyone as if there's not a future to that circumstance. So with this being the opportunity obstacle, it's like you are in the power to organize your personal ecosystem socially. You have the power to organize your micro societies. And it's more and more important to make sure that those micro systems are secure so that when you send your people off into the world, that they have like a protocol and they have a way of knowing and they also have a way of checking themselves as opposed to just assuming the school taught me this, so it's right. The government taught me this, so it's right. This parent said this, so it's right. Like they have a multiple people influencing them. And instead of being in what uh, one of my now deceased old mentors used to call, um, what did he call it? The man woman contract, like the, the heteronormative ghetto where it's like, you're, it's just you and the kids and they're, you're the only influence and you're the only person who socializes them and you're the only person who can tell them what it is. And, and then that's why your child is so fucking isolated <laughs> because then that's why they don't know how to deal with other people. That's why they have fucking anxiety in social situations because they were just raised in the ghetto of the nuclear family. And the, to be clear, the nuclear family is a ghetto because it does take a fucking village to raise a society and to raise people in a society. And this idea that Americans have that it doesn't, it's not a communal obligation is exactly why our community is a piece of shit. <laughs> so, you know, that. Now, our advantage aversion card, what is helping or hindering the situation regarding our character in June is, of course, the five of vials. Here we go with the five of cups. Now, pop culturally speaking, I like to think of the Five of Cups as Marlon Brando. I could have been a contender. Could have been somebody. You know, he's like already acting like he's dead in his speech. It's like, motherfucker, you still are somebody. Like, you're alive. You could still contend. Maybe not like at the level that, that you could have contended if you started a little bit earlier. But like, you can make something of yourself. You can coach. You can help. You can still do what you love. Like, you don't have to just because you can't do your perfect vision of the dream does not mean the dream is unattainable. Nobody is getting the exact thing that they invested in the journey to get. But 
oftentimes we find ourselves getting better and more and different than we went in expecting. This is true, of course, of like, just think about relationships, whether it's a friendship or a reuniting of a fraught family relationship or a romantic relationship. It's like the version of the relationship you thought you were getting in at the gate <laughs> and the relationship you are right now are not the same looking relationship but if you're in still in the relationship ideally it has improved or proven itself in ways beyond your reckoning and your imagination and supported you in ways that you didn't even know at the outset that you would need support in like a great relationship grows with you and that doesn't mean that there aren't moments of growing apart but that like even when you're apart growth is taking place and then the next time that you encounter, that is evident because the next encounter is so much more fulfilling and different than the last one, especially if it was not positive. And, you know, with that queen, all the pentacles energy, it's not always for us to watch the garden grow. Sometimes you just have to trust that you plant a seed and it, it has a nature of its own. And like you and got to watch it get sun and rain and time, but that you can just trust that that's what's happening. And I think with the five of vials, there's a very inherent lack of trust. Um, and there's, a, a, I mean, to be honest, it's like a very nihilistic card where, because we go from the four where it's like water, you know, for, for instance, the pop culture reference I have for the four of cups is Little Mermaid, but daddy, I love him. You know, it's like, I want what I want. And it's behind or it's here in my front of my face and nothing in the future. If it doesn't include, this is what I want. And then from the four, when it was just spilt water, which was just crying over spilt water. Then you get to the five and you're like, why is there blood in these cups? In my deck, there's blood in the cup in the five, in the herbal tarot. So by the time you get to the five, it's like, wow, this water turned to blood. And meaning like you invested true aspects of your nature and your character in this belief it wasn't just you weren't just in your feelings for a minute like you invested in your feelings and you created a world of your feelings and that's where you live now <laughs> and though even though there's worlds around you you don't see them because there's blood in your eyes and all you can attest to is what you don't have and that's scarcity culture that's survival culture. All I can attest to is what I don't have. Um, meanwhile, if you can appreciate what you have, then you can appreciate more than what you have. If you can't appreciate what you have, how are you going to appreciate more than what you have? So it's this practice of, and this is why I really think these this region of, of pentacles comes through, because it's like, please invest in the things that you really give a fuck about. Like, please remind yourself why you're in the body and why you are putting up with this human fuckery and why are you are, are here and do that by surrounding yourself in, by and with the communities that love you and that you love and that help you grow, even if they frustrate you, et cetera, et cetera. And then everything else that we have to deal with, you know, taxes, whatever, nine to fives, all those other things will be so much easier to bear because when you're punishing yourself or with or limiting yourself or negating yourself of your own accord that's going to have infinitely more damage than anybody else doing it to you because it takes anybody else affecting harm upon you you have to agree with internally for you to get the effect that they want you to get right? You have to be like, yeah, I am a piece of shit. I do deserve this. This is terrible. So you have to use every opportunity that you're actually free and liberated to make your own choices to do that in the direction of, of your joy. So that all the moments that we're all in this nihilistic Machiavellian society, not allowed to do that are balanced by how we spend our personal time. But if you're spending your personal time just furthering the negation of the obligation that is the general society, then you're just going to feel like a cog in the wheel and you're not going to feel empowered, which is all about the five of cups. There's a lack of empowerment in this. And here we see in this card, this person is crying because they was trying to do a spell and, you know, their cat came across the table and like, fuck that shit up. There's actually no cat in this video. I'm just incriminating them. And but meanwhile, behind them is all the exact ingredients it took to make the spell in the first place. So it's very much giving, 
if at first you don't succeed, dust yourself off and try again, word to Aaliyah. And it's also very much giving, if at first you don't succeed, redefine success, motherfucker. Because the second, third, fifth, 15th time that you did it might've been the time that you needed to do it as opposed to the first time. So success can come on the 15th. It doesn't just come on the first. Word to June 1st, which is tomorrow. Now, our key card uh, uh, is from the deck of character, as stated. It is a character. 